So why hasn't anybody else done this? Well, a couple of reasons. The market and, and the realities of network effects and legacy software, of course, is the reason why none of the people who have legacy products have done so. They keep coming up with new things, but um, I see design spaces as being a Fermi surface, an energy surface with energy wells, um, perhaps because this is, this is what we deal with in semiconductors all the time. But if the entire field is down in an energy well, it will go down and optimize until it's down at the bottom point. And if you want to do something better, find a deeper well. If you go a little ways while you climb up the energy wall, that's called getting $100 million of investment, and then you start to optimize and you discover you're back where you started. In order to actually find something better, you have to go a long ways to get over a hump or tunnel through. And then you're down perhaps in a different space, which may not be better, but at least you have some hope. Sure. So the real question then is not so much why hasn't anybody done anything different. The literature is full of things that are different. But what they tend to be is a little bit different. You'll get 6% gain. And they've gotten all these nice simulations that show you do get 6% gain. And some of those do wind up into conventional chips. You look at OA oh, Haswell and what the branch prediction logic is. That's a succession of like a half a dozen advances over the very early branch predictors. When they each added their 6% and their 12% and they're much, much better. But they're not fundamentally different. Sure. So, on the other hand, there have been things which are fundamentally different. The very first machine I ever wrote a compiler for was a stack machine, a large Burroughs mainframe, Burroughs B6500. And stack machines disappeared. And one of the reasons for that is because you can't do stacks in parallel because there's only one top of stack. One of the things that the mill does is it effectively has solved that problem and can have what amounts to multiple stacks um, running in parallel, although there's really only one structure and it's called the belt and one of our videos on our website talks about how that works. But there's a selection of things which were really good ideas in their day and then wound up being supplanted by advances in uh, fabrication technology and packaging technology and so forth, or simply market accident. The whole CISC versus CISC, uh, risk wars were a packaging factor. There was a brief time period, uh, about six years, in which it was possible to fit a really dirt, dumb, simple score in one chip, but nothing of any size. Well, that was called a CISC, and it was an enormous win because it was only one chip, and the costs of having a multi-chip core were phenomenal. Six years later, you could put a bigger core on that one ship. And funny, the argument went away, and nobody really cares about CIS versus risk anymore. Well, in somewhat a similar way, you have to, if you're going to make a fundamental advance, you have to be able to back off and start from first principles. And for better or worse, we did. And it's possible that um, a big company could have two, but big companies don't tend to think in terms of 10-year design projects. But equally, the academic world does not think of, of terms of 10-year design projects because that's longer than a PhD thesis, or at least for many PhD theses, we all know people who've taken longer. Um, so the, a design horizon that long more or less required it being a skunk works mm -hmm. and that's what we've been we're only recently emerging from stealth and um, what we wound up with is a new category 
I mentioned stack machines. Well, a stack machine is a category. An accumulator machine is a category. A, a, a register superscaler is a category. And there's several other categories. Within each category, there's been a bunch of different individual architectures. But it's recognized to be a category in the sense that an x86 looks like a power PC, looks like a MIPS, looks like the recent ARMS. And in fact, looks like a 36091 um, uh, in the very first of the hardware out-of-order processors. Um, the bill is a new category. It's not the only possible in that category. Other people will be do belt machines too. Um, we like the one we've got, but it, it's fundamentally it started a new category. It's not a new chip, it's a category. Does this mean that Patterson and Hennessy have to rewrite their book? Certainly not, but they certainly will add a chapter. <laughs> the other categories remain. Mm -hmm. For legacy reasons, if none other, they will be, continue to be sold. They are still selling Z80s. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very nice business. Thank you. Um, for that matter, Burroughs is still selling the B6500 descendants. <laughs> Those stack machines are still selling. The compiler that I wrote in 1971 is still in use. And why? Because it's an established market, people had legacy code, it does a real good job of that market and they have been able to keep it up to date. It was an excellent clean design from the beginning. Other, other processors of its day, there's no 6600s, CDC 6600s anymore. Um, there's no Univac 1108s anymore. None of those were quite as clean designs. The Burroughs machines are still there. IBM is still selling 360s. They don't call them 360s anymore, but they're 360s. Um, and the same will be true of, of other processors. We won't supplant things. People will find new markets. We'll fill a, our share of existing markets. So you don't feel discouraged by uh, the fact that the incumbents in this space have uh, have kept us rooted uh, in old technology. Um, more power to them. Um, we're a disruptor. We know we're a disruptor. Um, and the people who are interested in disruptors would like to come and uh, um, invest in this, partner with us. We're actively looking for investment. We're actively looking for partners. Um, but every disruptor faces a certain point at which the big guys, initially who ignored it, initially laugh at it, but suddenly turn around and realize that the disruptor is eating their lunch. At that point, we're going to have our Warren Zevon moment because the standard response is lawyers, guns, and money. And our hope is that we will have done enough Walmart out into small markets that we can survive that. If not, well, one of the big guys will buy us and we'll laugh all the way to the bank. <laughs> Where's criticism going to come from? Where are you most vulnerable? Well, the obvious one is, is nobody does this. And, uh, of course, mm -hmm. by definition. Um, the stock technical criticism has to do with, well, if you're going to be a DSP like um, f uh, 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 embedded type processor, um, well, how do you handle cache misses? Because uh, this is the bane of DSPs. We've solved that problem. One of our, our most recent video addresses how we've solved that problem. We could not have done it without having fixed that problem, and uh, there would not have been a business here. Uh, we might have been a really good DSP, but um, and that's not enough to not enough to crack a market. The DIs do a good enough job, and uh, we had to solve that. We did. There's a technical solution there. Um, we'll face no end of difficulties with um, code which um, tacitly assumes um, the characteristics of machines that we aren't. Mm 
Um, everybody who went through a nightmare of converting from 32 to 64 bit will discover that they have made brash assumptions that, for example, floating point is 80 bits wide. No, we're a 64 bit and 128 bit machine. We don't have 80 bit floating point. Um, so it's going to produce different answers than an x86 uh, using the x87 floating point will. And there will always be, be um, compatibility issues with, with any new processor, but they're no different than converting a code that ran on x86 to running on PowerPC. Um, nonetheless, we're bound to get people who say, I didn't get the same result, your, program, uh, your computer's busted, when in fact all they're doing is violating language standards. They got away with it, and somebody else, they may not get away with it. So is that one of the big challenges, knowing that you're going to get a bunch of C programmers who are going to jump in there and they're going to use it in a way that wasn't intended? Oh, it's not that it wasn't intended. Um, we, the whole thrust of the machine is that we will take standard programs straight off the web, compile them without modification, and run rings around any alternative. Um, this was an absolute requirement. We could not require rewrite of any form. Um, this is different than trying to get your program to run on a GPU where you have to completely rethink everything. Um, but as, as a business choice, this was made in the very, very early days. We would reject anything which forced a rewrite. Recompile, yes. Rewrite, no. Um, absolutely essential for having any success in the marketplace except in extreme niche cases. Um, so uh, the real problem is, is the people who, uh, because C is so relaxed, um, who violate language standards and expect that, that um, the other processors will work the same way.